After the war, Goodyear took steps to resume its public relations fleet operations, buying back the components of seven ships from the War Assets Administration. These blimps were used to trail banners for various events and for a short time were chartered to various companies like Canada Dry and Mobile Oil. However, this duty was short-lived as the emphasis for the Goodyear blimps returned to only promoting the company's name and products. In 1947, Goodyear developed a 10-panel incandescent night sign to replace the neonogram and flashing the message, Goodyear means good wear. Mr. Litchfield would have been pleased. Although his dream of transoceanic airship travel was lost, it gave way to a new era in which the Goodyear blimps would soar. The 1960s saw more ships added to the Goodyear promotional fleet like the Columbia, the ship christened, well, almost christened by Jacqueline Mayer, a recently crowned Miss America. Her failure to break the bottle did not break the spirits of a company who found a unique way to crack the brave new world of the 1960s. Changing attitudes and changing channels presented Goodyear with a unique platform to change the way the world looked from the top down. The first network television, I believe, was in 63, the Orange Bowl, done by a CBS producer called Frank Cherkinian, and it's really taken off since there. Skyrocketed, to be more accurate. Since 1963, Goodyear has covered over 2,500 live network televised events, from the Rose Bowl to the Brickyard 400, the U.S. Open to World Series Baseball. First of all, the cameras were very, very heavy, the microwave equipment. Uh, the unions at that time required two guys to be in there. So, I mean, we had to and literally ask for skinny people because we were using all our lift with these heavy, heavy cameras. Besides being thin, they also had to be steady because at one time, blimp photography was done by hanging the camera out the side of the gondola window. It, it very much looked like the most amateur's video but you could see that there was this great overall picture of an event. No one had ever seen the Rose Bowl with 106,000 people. No one had ever seen the Orange Bowl. But today, the camera Goodyear uses and help design is less than half the weight, with a lens offering 55 times the intensity of anything ever before. Here's how it works. A microwave transmitter sends a camera signal to the ground dish antenna, which is attached to the network's control truck. The blimp pilot listens for cues from the show's director for the best live shot. 15. Richard, can you swing over and shoot the downtown building? So you, you're almost right over them, actually. But, uh, 10 seconds. Show a little downtown action. Yeah, sure. Former BP building and stuff? Sure. Three, two, coming back. And we are back and live. Bartolo Colon works out of his first gym of the afternoon. The Indians open to get something going. Uh, the producer, director, and technical manager will have direct access to the pilot and the camera person aboard the airship, and uh, just goes from there. If it's four days of golf, then you're in the air six to eight hours a day for four days. If it's one football game, you're doing a three and a half hour left-hand turn around some stadium, and it can be anything from a beauty shot uh, coming out of or going into a commercial uh, down to uh, live play action shots or replays because of the long lens we're using. Using Goodyear's state-of-the-art gyrocam, Goodyear blimps cover about 120 events a year, giving the world the best seat in the house for line drives and lakefronts, rushing and racing. Goodyear operates three U.S. blimps, all able to cover television events from coast to coast. Under normal conditions, the Goodyear blimp traveling at about 35 miles per hour and at a 1,500-foot altitude has a life of its own in the air. Its movements are slow and ponderous, yet it reacts very intimately to air currents and thermals. Flying in Chicago is difficult. I mean, I remember many times where a, uh, a director or a producer would ask me, when the blimp is getting here, and I said, hey, it's going two miles an hour, the wind has come up, but we will get here. Uh, sometimes we've, you know, sometimes we've even flown backwards in Chicago because it's so windy.